We're back, and we've got one more movie to review for you, and I've got my good friend Jamie Hickson. For those who don't know Jamie, Jamie, he knows a lot about movies. He knows a lot about comic books, so I've got him on the panel to help with this next review. We're getting ready to review Ant-Man and the Wasp. It's a movie that came out here in July of uh, 2018, and uh, it's a movie that uh, I personally liked. Did you like it, Jamie? I did like it very much. Yeah. Um, The movie uh, continues on with the story of Ant-Man, and when we first find him, we find him on House Arrest. Is that right? Right. Um, and I believe something that happened in another movie. (laughs) Correct. (laughs) Correct. So So this movie in the timeline, for those who are paying attention, um, (laughs) this movie comes after Captain America Civil War. Right. But before Avengers Avengers Infinity Infinity War. War. Right. All right. So we're all on the same page there. (laughs) Theoretically. <laughs> but they explain it in the movie. You know, oh, yeah. you should have been running around with Captain America, you know, that kind yeah. of thing. So so does it help to watch those other movies? Uh, maybe just a little for a little bit of context as to, you know, who who he's been adventuring with. Mm-hmm. Because, he like, he's in um, his Age of Ultron, right? Uh, Ant-Man? No, no. Oh, he's not? No. Oh, okay. It's the Captain America movie Civil where War. he grows. Yeah. You know, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, but they but they use that effect again, where he grows giant instead of small, yeah. and uh, yeah, and that that was a nice touch in this this film where they have, uh, uh, Lor- um, I almost said Lawrence is it Lawrence Fishburne? Yeah, it's right? Lawrence Fishburne. Lawrence yeah. Fishburne's character is like a throwback to uh, the old days of Marvel. Mm-hmm. So, um, we f- we find uh, uh, what's his face? Who plays Ant Man? Paul Rudd. Paul Rudd. We find his character, like we said, he's on house arrest, and you would think that he still has uh, a good relationship with Michael Douglas's character and Evangeline Lilly's character, but he doesn't. Uh, they're kind of ticked off at him for all his uh, baloney he did with uh, <laughs> uh, Captain America and Falcon and all those folks, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, so they're not really on the best of speaking terms, but uh, with all the events going on in the world, they somehow get uh, joined together. Um, did you find this film to be very um, exciting? Was it as fun as the first one was? I think it was, you know, because th- they found a lot of different ways to use the uh, Ant-Man powers, mm-hmm. you know, when he shrinks and changes size and things like that while he's fighting and uh particularly with the wasp uh she she was fun i liked her yeah uh i mean she just it you know and relatively she probably has more experience with it than uh paul rudd's character because she's you know her dad's the one that invented it (laughs) you know essentially hank pym you know originated the formulas so but she because she's able to just you know kick you know, ten people's uh, faces in while yeah, her, while everybody's kind of running around figuring out what's going on. Yeah, you know, her so. fighting scenes were were just were fun because you're like, yeah, you know, <laughs> beat that bad guy. Um, so who is the bad guy in this film? There's like several different ones. Yeah, uh, there's that we a couple gotta... a couple different ones. It kind of bounces back and forth, and uh, uh, they 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 use a character that's from the Marvel universe in the comics mm-hmm. called Ghost. Right, but they. They use that character in a, a slightly different way. Uh, she's definitely a villain in the comics because there's there's a comic uh, where they take a, a essentially a team of bad guys who are locked up in this high you know high tech facility and they have them go on missions yeah. to kind of pay off their debt or whatever. And she's one of those in the comics. I don't know that they ever really fully redeem her. Or however you want to look at it, because like a bunch of different characters have been in there. Um, well, it, it's the um, and now I'm I'm totally drawing a blank. There's just so much to remember. <laughs> there is, you know, <laughs> yeah, actors' names and comics and this and that. Uh, <laughs> but it's kind of neat the way that they utilize her in here in, in this film. Yeah, uh, her powers are pretty much the same, but it's it's interesting that they made her kind of a spy. You know, so. yeah. Uh, another villain we got in this film is uh, Walton Goggins' character. He plays kind of like a a, <laughs> a thug or like a a mob kind of guy, right? Yeah, he's he's well, he's kind of a uh, he's arms, an F- he's an arms dealer essentially, yeah. you know. But he he can get a lot of different things, you know, whether it be technology or arms or whatever. So Michael Pena returns for his character, where he basically <laughs> you know gives a lot of exposition, but in a in a funny way. Yeah. <laughs> 
Uh, Michael Douglas is in it. And, you know, in the first one they teased about Michael Douglas's wife and how she is trapped in the quantum zone or whatever it's called. Yeah. And uh, we kind of kind of get to see her. Kind of, yeah, definitely. What do you think about Michelle Pfeiffer? I, I thought that was perfect casting, you know, because yeah. uh, Janet Van Dyne is supposed to be kind of a upscale lady, you know. <laughs> yeah. Very refined and whatnot. And, uh, you know, she fits that bill, you know, just the way she handles the role, you know. But, uh, yeah, I, I, I mean, I, I can't think of anybody that w- wasn't suited for their role in, in this movie. And, and when you think of, you know, some people think of the Ant-Man films or some of the other, or even Guardians of the Galaxy as being like side films from the main Marvel movies. But it's it's neat how they're tying them all together. Yeah. You know, they've done it without getting too convoluted. Um, although I've, I've heard some, some negative feedback from some fans about Infinity War that it was just like too much like there was so much going on i haven't seen it yet so i'll have to reserve that judgment for later (laughs) (laughs) i like the film i like both of those films you know it's it's not you know trying to save the whole galaxy and the whole world it's a nice small little contained story but it's a fun story and it's one of those where you just kind of like yeah man i like ant-man bring on some more (laughs) movies you want to see some more and and they and they tie it into infinity war you know so yeah it's kind of it's kind of neat that like i was saying they tie they put all the movies you know weave them in together but yeah i I definitely am looking forward to another one i hope they do another one all right Uh, paul rudd's very well suited for this type of character because i think he plays he plays those kind of roles very well where uh you know he might be a little mischievous or did something wrong but you, you know he can definitely uh, he's, you know, he's still got that like, oh, you know what? Even though you did wrong, I still want to see you succeed. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. <laughs> you want to see him. Yeah. Do yeah. better and, and redeem himself, I guess. Yeah. And that, you know, that and that's the the end game for a lot of these type of characters is like you. That's the whole purpose. Once they get to the end, you have to see how they do it, you know, how they redeem themselves. Were you surprised by the end credit scene? Did you uh, understand well, yeah, I did, uh, and that, yeah, that's what I was saying. Uh, well, I, I guess that's the one that, that ties it to Infinity Wars. Yep. It? So, yep. And then, the, and there is a scene at the very, very, very end of the credits, but you don't have to stick around for it if you don't want to. You could just look it up online, and uh, it's it's funny, but it's just a throwback to what happened in the movie. So. I I thought they should have switched those. Yeah. You know what I mean? They should have put that one right there, and then yeah, the and the, the, the more and the the more, one that's a little more for foreshadowing or whatever you want to call it they should have put that at the very end yeah Yeah. well what are you gonna do you can't win them all (laughs) he's jamie i'm chris the name of the movie is called ant-man and the wasp thank you for listening to the screen team thank you for watching on youtube and remember we want you to know before you go